the views expressed on this podcast are based on a satirical and at times comical view of the subject matter. So don't get your panties in a wad. Live long and prosper, fuckers. Let's get the show started. Big O is showtime! This is the Tempest Universe, man. Hold on to your ass. You're in for a hell of a ride. I can barely hear what's going on on the podcast right now. This is the Tempest Universe, and I am your host, Manny. And thank you for uh, sticking around on the 16th of June. And we are nine days away from the so-called UAP Congressional Report. And, man... (laughs) <laughs> it's heating up. It is heating up. We got one guy that is literally leading everything. And we're going to talk about him in the last article for today. We got four articles to talk about. And then after that, the Asgardians are coming on. I really don't know what they're going to talk about. Hopefully it's about this UAP report. I didn't really ask any questions. All I said was, which one of you Asgardians wants to come on to the pod tonight? And so we got a couple. We got a couple that are going to be on here to talk madness, I'm sure. So get ready. Right now, live on the uh, live chat on Spreaker.com, because it is the only place that you can listen to the podcast live, we got The Norm, Green Man, GameVit, and Dre. Then slowly, the rest will show up as the podcast continues. I want to thank the uh, Spreaker.com for finally... For two fucking years, I've been asking them to give us some good data as far as where are people listening from. Before, the data was like all over the place. They were giving us just general shit that I couldn't really uh, dive into. But about a couple of weeks ago, all of a sudden, things got real. They gave us real damn data. And let me tell you, Wisconsin is killing the Tempest Universe UFO Buster Radio game. I thank you guys for listening. Now, um, as far as I know, the majority of the uh, Asgardians are not there. But number two is California. Out there is the one and only Green Man. And a few other folks, which uh, are not Asgardians because they don't show up live. If you want to be an Asgardian, get on here live. Then we got New York, my hometown, baby. North Carolina, Florida, the other hometown. That's like the second hometown. And Texas is the third. Probably... Why Texas comes in at number six. There are so many states. Uh, finally, I get to see where everybody's listening from. And uh, let me tell you, I'm floored. It is fantastic. It is amazing. I can't believe that there are so many people. Uh, really, there's not one single state that isn't accounted for. There is not one single commonwealth that isn't accounted for. That's what you got to know. Countries all over the place got to love the countries, Mexico, South America, South Africa. I mean, it just continues on and on. I thank you guys for being part of this uh, craziness that is the Tempest Universe at this time as well. Because you could be listening, and you probably do. I'm the no, no fucks given. I'm, I'm sure you do listen to the guys that are that are like uh, like the uh, the mummy from Tales of the Crypt selling their book because they regurgitated Roswell Roswell like fifty times. And you're reading the damn book, uh, 2021. I understand, I get it. Uh, knowledge is power, and you're learning more, and you're being more acclimated to the UFO story. But what's happening today, it is what is pivotal to ufology, which is almost dead, and your future, your future, your kids' future, all those guys. It is what's happening now. So... Thank you for being here with me. And if you can, spread the word. 
You guys in Oregon, Colorado, New Jersey, Hawaii. I can't believe people in Hawaii listen to me. That is just crazy. I really want to try some poi sometime. Do I, f- I hear it's not that tasty. Uh, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Nevada, Georgia, Missouri. And I can go on and on. And I'm glad you guys are here with me. We got four stories today. It's going to be uh, bananas. For you guys in South America and Mexico, I do got a little Latin tune for you in the second song for today. But um, it's Wednesday. We are trying to get this uh, madness out of the way. It's hump day. And so now we need to move on to the rest of the week and hopefully the weekend with uh, lots of alcohol. And for those of you, for those of you who uh, partake of the weed, you're going to go into the bushes, I'm sure. But uh, let's get this party started so we can get rolling and make it past these four news stories and talk to the Asgardians here live. Like a milli rocket, skin clear, still look y'all, and they milli knockers, money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket, yeah. I still love my baby, even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade the knock. No, Russell Wilson, way I get low and stay in the pocket. I get paid and do my dance like a touchdown, yeah. I can't do no time, only that gun around. In my teens, we were acting up and running around. Now we're grown, still get to it if it's necessary. On the ground from January to January Never met nobody who retired when they were young, they were young. So I guess I gotta get it to the cemetery go, go. Getting paid just for rapping, it's fun, it's fun. I let up around the month and every February Told them slide, no electric, no electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic 777 Told them slide, no electric yeah. It's getting hectic 777 Yeah, yeah Couple them one in my head just to say they did it Can't lie, I'm so paranoid and the window's tinted I own everything around me, you can say it's rented Not talking phone numbers when I'm talking seven digits Earn it by the day, every second minute Used to pay me none, look, now they pay attention Everybody said they drip, but I banded it See them copy all the looks, but I stay switching Pick up the loop, then hit the bank Can't ever change the road to change Captain say the pay to say the day They made me wait I'm breaking chains Yeah, yeah Tell me feeling bubbly off the rose Took a minute but I got it out the slow way Friends turn the foes Haters tell them go away Rappers make a shiggy dance like a soul train Told them slide no electric Electric Yeah It's getting hectic 777 Yeah 777 Yeah Told them slide no electric thing is that last night out of nowhere the storm just like blew by it lasted about 15 minutes but the winds were crazy and i have been congested ever since i feel like one of those cat videos where you hear the cat (coughs) that's how they sneeze that's been me i literally had this craziest sneeze right before the podcast started and and now i feel super congested but so deal with it that's what i'm saying i'm trying to explain with you that you're going to have to deal with some mucus in the vocal cords and uh, the nostril area, just because of Mother Nature, for fuck's sake. This first story that we got has to do with a representative out of the um, the Tennessee 2nd Congressional District. He uh, He's named Timothy Floyd Burchett. Timothy actually got uh, accosted by TMZ. Don't you love that? Like, let me tell you something. This is what I want to do. 
This is what I, this guy who works for TMZ, he's got the balls on him. But let me tell you, this is the way UFO, ufology, UAP, whatever the fuck you want to call it, alien abduction, probings, uh, cattle mutilations, these interviews with people in, you know, government positions. It should happen like this. The, the way that I'm about to play it, every, that's, the, what, that's what I want to do. Like, I want to walk up to Ronnie Dawson just when he's, like, either on the shitter or he's, like, getting on his truck to deliver some oil, some crude oil. I'll be like, hey, Ronnie, and just, like, be in his face. That's the way, when you're dealing with a topic like ufology and UFOs, that's the way it should be. You should catch these people off guard when they least inspect it, and, and basically they're going to give you their honest answer, especially if they're in government because they, that's what, that's what they practice. You know, they stand in front of the mirror all the time, uh, probably half naked just with a shirt on, trying to figure out what the hell they're going to tell people about the topic. But um, here is Representative uh, Tim Burchett out of Tennessee. I mean, fuck, I, I'm hoping he gets uh, reelected uh, next time around because <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be talking about this interview. Check it out. Congressman, I know right now um, with President Biden, when he's uh, going to speak to uh, Putin, that he's talking. To, he's going to ask him about the uh, UFO thing yeah. and stuff like that. I, I think that's ridiculous. If the Russians had UFO technology, I mean, they would own us right now. They used to say that. I've heard people talk about how the Nazis had it in the Second World War. But if they did, they would have won. That is ridiculous. It has to be something that's that's out of our galaxy. It just has to be if if it, if it in fact is real. And Congressman, you 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 have always been a straight shooter. It's been like I, I know when um, it's been bipartisan, but the one thing I've noticed is. It doesn't, doesn't matter which president it is. Nobody ever talks yeah. about the... Uh, they the, always say they're going to do something about it, and then they get in office. And, and honestly, I thought Trump was going to do something. He was going to release the files. But, you know, they release these files are redacted. It's just a big blob of blo- whiteout. And uh, it, clearly something's going on that, that we can't handle. I mean, UFOs were in the Bible. Read, so, read, read Ezekiel. It talks about the wheel flying around. So, I mean, it, they're... They've been around since we've been around, and um, somebody needs to come up with some answers. So the, even when something's supposed to be released coming up in a, in a few uh, weeks or months, what do you think is going to be in that? I don't believe it. I, I think Roswell was covered up. I think, um, um, you know, more people believe in UFOs than believe in Congress for good reason, because of the jack leg stuff we do like that. We, we talk about we're going to release it, and then we never do, or we re- release something that's so redacted that it's just ridiculous. The Air Force had a release of, of, on Roswell, which was the big the big deal, I think, from 48, and the big cover up there. And, and the guy that did it was a smart aleck, and he kind of smirked the whole time, and nobody took it serious. They ought to take it serious. The American public wants to know, and frankly, we deserve to know. I, I think at some point it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, man. I, I think, think so, in the too. Next... I think they're going to release that. I think somebody's going to release stuff. The, the, the Kennedy assassination files are going to do it all. But, un, but we haven't had a president with enough guts to do it just yet. What kills me about this interview is that he told our <laughs> our second congressional representative out of Tennessee that he's a straight shooter. Like, literally, like he goes up to the to uh, Capitol Hill and be slapping the hose. That's what it sounded like. Like, he literally was the most gangster representative out in Capitol Hill was, <laughs> was uh, Timothy Floyd Burchett, uh, representative out of, uh, out of Tennessee. Listen, this is the way it needs to go down. This is the way interviews regarding this topic need to happen in Capitol Hill. You just find one of these fools who are walking on their way to lunch or trying to jump into their their uh, expensive ass car, and you interview them on the spot. Now, this TMZ uh, photographer, actually, is what the article says, um, got him at a good time, man, because he he gave zero fucks about it. He talked about the Bible. He talked about Ezekiel. He talked about Roswell. There is no doubt that this representative is hip to UFOs, and he's been waiting. He's been sitting in Tennessee waiting for the time where he can pounce on this like uh, a feral cat. That's what he's been doing, and he just did. He just came out the closet, pretty as can be. Representative Burchett believes in UFOs, and he even said we were thinking that Trump was going to be the disclosure president. He's probably the only one that thought that, but still. It turns out that uh, Trump was not the disclosure president. He did put together 
officially in the public face the Space Force, which probably was put together like 40 years ago, but no fucks given there. But listen, it is guys like Burchett here that can make things happen as far as getting together the rest of the knuckleheads out in Capitol Hill to just accept it. UFOs are a real thing. UFOs are a happening thing. Now, he might want to leave uh, Ezekiel's wheel out of it, but fuck, whatever works right, you do whatever you need to do in order to get this going so that people understand that this is a real story. This is a real story. Um, The article continues to quote the uh, Ezekiel Bible verse. I'm going to just read it for you, and then we'll just go into the next article. An immense cloud with flashing lightning surrounded by brilliant light. Kind of sounds like Dre's house. Uh, The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was human, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Fucking crazy as hell. The last part of the passage says, When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go, and the wheels would rise along with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Cryptic as fuck, I get it, but still, there is something to what our representative out of Tennessee is saying, and that is these situations didn't just start with Roswell, World War I, uh, even before then. They have been here for eons. And it is now, after all this nonsense, that finally somebody had the cojones to start releasing shit. And now it's a topic of conversation. How the fuck long did that take? A few thousand years? Come on. Stop fucking around. I mean, at one point we got to hold these guys accountable. Because if what they're saying, if what they're trying to say is real then our intelligence community is shit. You heard me. You, right there, listening. You, with the black suit, with the shades and the uh, neuralizer. The intelligence community is shit. You've literally missed out on UAPs altogether. Like, if you're saying that Russia and China is doing it, you're a dumkov. You're a dingbat. You fucked up. You fucked up. You did, because you missed decades of another superpower who's a threat to the United States. You totally missed it. Literally, you were asleep with your hand in your crotch, having a good time, rather than watching the skies. There's more to the article regarding our buddy, uh, Representative Burchett, and uh, thank you to him for just being open and honest, because that's the way you need to be. Otherwise, uh, we're fucked. Uh, For you guys in Mexico and South America, this is for you. Oh, uh, also Dre. I'm sure he's going to like this. Dre, put your uh, drink cup up and uh, get ready. Shots. Way back. I see. Sigue el corriente. Saca la botella. Cambia el ambiente. Baby, no me mientes Tú sabes que te gusta muy caliente Y baby, cuando bailas Porque no sabes si estoy Que me quedo callada Y baby, estoy perdido Volviendo loco en mi mente Yo no sé lo que pasó Cuéntame Porque el corazón me robó ya Saca la botella hasta que me Y eso se acabó, y eso se acabó Bailando por la noche sin miedo Y eso se acabó, y eso se acabó Baby, me robaste el corazón Y baby, estoy pelado, me 
robaste demasiado Bailando en mi mente todavía no he pagado Bájalo, bájalo pa' mí Tíralo, tíralo vacía Sundress, gobless Let you shine on my love Cuéntame porque el corazón me robó ya Saca la botella hasta que me olvide Saca la botella y eso se acabó Y eso se acabó Bailando por la noche Corriente, saca la botella, cambia el ambiente. Baby, no me mientes. Tú sabes que te gusta muy caliente. Y baby, cuando bailas, porque no sabes si todo yo me quedo calla. Y baby, estoy perdido. Y eso se acabó. Y eso se acabó. Bailando por la noche. Sí. That's the uh, representative Bouchard, Bouchette, running up to the ISS using his bionic skills to elude another reporter. Hey, by the way, if you're not listening to the podcast, well, actually you are right now because you heard me say it, but if you just started and you think it's something that's worth sharing with other people, please do. Share it. Sharing is caring, as Big O used to say, because there are babies who are preemies who could benefit from listening to your football to radio. Who cares about Einstein's music? Nobody cares about that shit. Classical music? No. Boring as fuck. You're putting babies' brains to sleep. You need to listen. Put that that uh, headset on the baby. Put it on your uh, belly before the baby even gets out. And let them listen to the fact that um, their minds are going to be probed in the very near future. Guaranteed. <laughs> so unconventional it's not even funny the Navy and FBI actually got together today at the uh, US House Committee on the classified bullshit uh, to give them a briefing today about UAPs <laughs> you guys didn't know that did anybody know that was that ever announced to anyone at any time that this was going to happen today today of all days on hump day the Navy and the FBI wants to get together then they didn't go to the same committee with uh, Marco El Rubio that requested the report. No, they decided to go to the House's Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation. For fuck's sake. They are counter everything except brains. Well, actually, they might be counter brains because they're dumb as fuck. The, all these guys who are... are uh, part of this uh, intelligence situation apparently have missed out on the boat so now they need briefings What didn't you guys see fire in the sky did none of these fuckers ever have a TV or a DVD or a freaking Betamax or whatever the fuck it, uh, it would take for you to watch these movies you know Close Encounters of the Third Kind E.T. I mean we can go on forever did you guys not Pay attention to the news because you're so above the blue collar person in this country. So, anyway, these uh, people they have to do uh, with intelligence, which is really fucking lacking. Uh, they actually um, got some information from the director of national intelligence uh, regarding a collection 
reports, and investigations of UAPs. For fuck's sake, really? Um, now, the chairman of this uh, committee of lack of intelligence is Representative Andre Carson of Indiana. The Midwest is coming out on this, folks. i am be honest with you. Um, of course, Andre Carson had a bunch of statements that he had to make. We'll, we'll get into the statements in a second. But isn't this like the dumbest fucking committee ever? The permanent committee on intelligence. You fuckers, for decades, for decades, were not able to identify UAPs or UFOs as being the um, the origin of modern time UFOs, like fucking Tic Tacs and saucers and shit. Like you guys literally, what the fuck did you do the last 60, 70, 80 years? What kind of x lax were you on that you couldn't stay watching the monitors? I just, I just don't understand. I mean, this is intelligence, really. Like literally, they would sit down, like the NSA, which is actually not too far from where I'm at right now, there's a humongous NSA building. Like, they would decipher your communication. They will listen to your phone calls. They will look through your computers because they can. But not a single one of those motherfuckers can actually tell you what the fuck is a UFO, what it is, where it originates from. They're just throwing fucking guesses at it. They're spitballing it. To the public, that is. To you. The blue-collar, everyday person they're giving you the image that they're spitballing at this, trying to figure out what it is. You and I both know that they know. They just don't want to tell you. Okay, that's the honest truth. If you go back later on and you want to listen to the podcast, listen to the clip from our buddy uh, Burchett from Tennessee. He told you that. They dance around the topic. They don't want you to know. Eventually, we're going to have enough evidence to where we don't need them, to where we take control of the narrative. It might be for a small bit of time while we cast them with their balls out. But I guarantee you, eventually, we will know enough to challenge them at every instance. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so our representative here out of Indiana, uh, Representative Carson, uh, basically said, hey, we got we got together. We got this briefing from the Navy and the FBI, and there's a quote here. The quote is actually coming from his office. So, you know, he dictated this to someone. Cigars involved, I don't know. But he says, do UAPs have links to our foreign adversaries? We already heard from Bouchard. He's like, really? If Russia would have had this kind of technology... From like right after World War II, they would have shitted on us the whole damn time. This is what makes no sense. That any adversary from the United States who had this kind of technology would have held on to it for like 80 plus fucking years. 120 years. Really? Why would you sacrifice all the people in your country, all those men and women that you sent to war during world wars, just so that... uh, what? So that you can say what in the future when someone finds you out. That's what I'm saying. This is this is not someone else on the planet. I'm just saying that. Fuck it. I mean, Lou can say it. Why can I? Anyway, so he says this. Uh, do UAPs have links to our foreign adversaries? Do UAPs pose a threat? Hello, numbnuts. Of course they do. Uh, and how do we gather information and analyze it to respond to these key questions the answers are important to our national security. How the fuck did they just wake up? I don't understand this. Like for years, people have been reporting they're being abducted, that their cars come to a complete stop, they go through these experiences, they have nuclear burns, you know, from radiation burns, their skin's bubbling. But yet, June 16, 2021, it's a national threat. Oh, you guys are dickheads. Anyway... So the intelligence community and science community and scientists share professions that search for the truth. Who is that, SETI? 
and by gathering information from diverse sources and methods and conducting rigorous analysis with objectivity and integrity. This is how Carson says we're going to figure this out. So what was Project Blue Book and all these other projects? Was that not a rigorous scientific investigation? Did we not follow the rules of science? Was the hypothesis that was drawn back then, was it just all wrong? This, this is what we're dealing with, thanks to our, our folks in this permanent select committee on intelligence. There is no intelligence. I'll just be honest with you. You already know this. There is zero intelligence there. If you can put out a report, which we still... Hey, listen, let's, let's be honest. We still haven't seen the fucking report yet. But if you can put out a report that says maybe it's China or Russia, but we don't know, and we're not going to rule out aliens, there's a problem. There's a problem, because either your, your intelligence apparatus is so fucking fucked that you have no idea who's flying over your sovereign skies that you literally will admit to the public in a congressional report that you're fucking clueless. That just tells me that the real story, the truth about UFOs, is so fucking amazing that it's going to blow our fucking minds away. But you're too much of a dickhead and a lily livered coward, as they used to say back in the day, a yellow back fucker, that you will never admit to the truth because you've been lying to everyone. Your mama, your dada, your kids, your grandkids, the United States government, the people around the world, you've been lying to. So you'll take this shit to the grave and fuck everybody else. I mean, I'm just giving you the honest truth. You don't get this kind of stuff in in other podcasts, right? They don't tell you this stuff. They really don't. They'll play around and they'll say, maybe we need to accept the fact that they at least put a report out that kind of tells us that uh, maybe there's UFOs out there that's just unexplained. For fuck's sake, they've been telling us that forever. They've been telling us. They always said the percentage of UFOs continue to be unexplained. But no way that they are out of this uh, world, that they are out of our solar system, that they belong to any other entity other than possibly Russia, China, or uh, North Korea. Yeah. You don't hear shit like this in any of the other podcasts. I'm telling you, all the other podcasts, they will just go back to the history books. So I remember when Project Blue Book and blah, 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 they just regurgitate shit. I mean, it, it is it is just crazy I mean, what they do. I'll be honest. It's, it's just sad in so many ways. But this is the article if you want to read from our not-intelligence community the fact that they received their briefing which is probably fucking redacted as hell as well. But uh, for your eyes only, and your ears only, we're going to go to the next track because this is really how we feel about Congressional Intelligence Committees. Talking 
I actually mixed together, believe it or not, vodka and Crown Royal. I mean, come on. This is how we get to the truth, to be honest. Get down. 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 I'll put you down. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Hasta la vista, baby. J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine... Listen, if there's anybody in the movie biz, besides maybe Spielberg, that understands E.T., it would be J.J. Abrams, to be honest. He did a great job with Star Trek, the whole reboot. Well, it's not even like a reboot. It's just having a whole fucking different uh, timeline, different uh, uh, reality. And he did a great job. And God bless you, J.J. Abrams. Bless. God bless you. Really. God bless you for bringing Leonard Nimoy into those movies. You know? R.I.P., Leonard. Live long and prosper. You're probably hanging out there with Big O laughing at me right now, but that's the way it is. J.J. Abrams is uh, now going to attack the whole UAP government connection craziness, UFOs, whatever you want to call it. Everything that these representatives are, are talking about in the last two articles, J.J. Abrams is going to sum that shit up. Thanks to Showtime. Showtime is putting together under the auspices of J.J. Abrams a story about UAPs and UFOs which I'm sure it's got to go deep on the cover but at the at the core of this is everything that we've been talking about for the last four fucking years it's going to bring together the issues from 2015 with the Navy pilots it's going to talk about the 2017 uh, New York Times article that talked about ATIP thanks to Captain Lou Elizondo it's going to talk about all those things in a four-episode documentary. I want to I want to call it a shockumentary, but it's not shocking anymore. Like, how many times do we have to see documentaries about the same shit? Sorry, JJ. JJ. Sorry about that, but it's the truth. Like, you can go on Prime Video right now, Showtime Execs, and you can pick about a dozen freaking different stories or documentaries or docu series regarding the same shit. No one's no one's watching that shit, folks. Come on. No one's paying attention to the UFO story. So you can put your little documentaries together and uh shitty ass podcasters like myself will go see it just to get pissed off about it. But maybe let me be honest, maybe JJ Abrams is the one to do it. Maybe JJ is going to put it together. Maybe. His filmography is magnificent. There are things that he's worked on that I had no idea he was, in, he was even involved in it. Like some of the Star Wars films. Like for fuck's sake, I had no idea that he was, he was a producer on some of those. J.J. Abrams is skilled when it comes to E.T. I get it. Hopefully he presents a story that will get folks who actually fucking subscribe to Showtime, because I don't. Like, I used to love Showtime for the boxing, but who, who the fuck is, uh, you know, most of the shit you get on YouTube, Showtime, stop fucking around. But maybe J.J. Abrams is going to do it. Maybe he's he's the ticket to get all the millennials on top of this. To get all the people that love his films to come together kumbaya and accept the reality of today. And that is that there's no special effects. These things are happening for real. These UAPs really did this that normally would take millions of dollars to produce in special effects in a film. Maybe he can do that. According to Showtime, the uh, the name of this 
docu series is UFO. I, I swear to God, I, I I'm telling you, in the last three years, somebody else called the docu series UFO. I'm pretty sure of it. But the Showtime execs say that this docu series is going to explore, and here's the quote: unsettling theories of a subject that recently reached national national headlines. <laughs> It actually reaches it or has reached national headlines many times throughout the last fucking hundred years. It's just nobody paid attention. It also says and has historically been the focus of powerful politicians and CEOs, while average citizens pursuing the very same truth have been ridiculed and uh, ostracized. That is a quadrillion percent the truth. Average citizens have been rubber dicked. Average citizens have been probed by their own fellow citizens just because they're experiencers. The one person that comes to mind every time is my main man, my dog from Ranger, Ranger Texas, Ronnie Dawson. He had an experience. If anyone that you listen to that has a genuine story, it's Ronnie. Yeah, it gets a little crazy sometimes with the old 17, but still. From the very first time Big O and I interviewed Ronnie till today, the story really hasn't changed. It's been the same. Just like if you listen to Travis Walton from way back when, you listen to him now when he's doing his uh, UFO conference circuit tour, the story is the same. The only thing that's changed is how he interprets what happened to him. You know, the uh, the tough country guy, you know, Freaking cutting down goddamn trees up in the mountains. Yeah, he, he kind of saw what happened to him a little different than the guy that's a little older now, more seasoned and still breathing. He sees that incident a little different, but what happened, the actual story remains the same. If you want to check out this uh, docu-series, it begins, I believe it says Sunday, August the 8th. So it was going to premiere on Films, whatever the fuck that is. Might be a cable channel called Films. They are going to debut it August the 8th. And then later on that night, and I believe it's like at midnight, they'll re- they'll uh, release it. But uh, August the 8th, later on that night, you can go on to Showtime at 9 p.m. And all four episodes are going to be released at the same time. Because we're we're a binging nation now. We just binge. We will sit there from 9 p.m. to like 2 o'clock in the morning watching this freaking docuseries until we're done. So book it. Get ready. Write it down. Get that free 30, 30 days. One month free of Showtime. So you can watch this and then just cancel your membership. Sorry, Showtime. That's the way we roll because we're blue-collar people who can't afford your damn prices. I'm just saying. Let's get it together, y'all. Uh, but check it out. The uh, docuseries is called UFO. J.J. Abrams is on deck. And, and this isn't. If anyone can represent E.T. like anyone else in this uh, Hollywood take on the UFO story, it's J.J. Abrams. He's going to make it nice and flashy for you. But hopefully he sticks to the truth, to what we know today. It doesn't get you know too crazy like shows like you know, 17-inch probes coming at people and stuff like that. That would not be nice, JJ. It, it would be almost scary, to be honest. One more story for you guys. This one involves our brother Lou. And I'm telling you, we, we need to get together and support Lou. That's all I'm saying.
Listen, you guys know, if you have, like, teenagers or young adults, that is the person singing this song. I'll be honest with you. You, you guys know. They're probably sitting in their room naked as hell right now. So, you know, last week I noted that Lou Elizondo, he was pressured by an interview that uh, we talked about that happened from the Washington Post. This young lady, reporter gal, he had him on YouTube, video interview, and pressured him. Like, literally, she was waterboarding him on YouTube to just reveal what he thought the origin of UFOs were if they were not Russian or Chinese. Like, literally, she was, like, holding the damn rag over his fucking mouth and nose and dropping all kind of water on it. And he came out. Like, literally, he came came out and he said, Hey, it could be one or three things, girl. Like that. Like a straight shooter. Like he was coming, like, from somewhere, from, like, a gang. I'm a straight shooter, girl. I'm going to tell you. It's interdimensional. Like, they just blink in and out. It's some kind of fucking society that lives under the freaking ocean and shit that's been there for quadrillion a bunch of years. And they're fucking with us now. Or it could be straight up from outer space, like fucking aliens, and they have, like, blood that's acid. Can you handle that? So, I mean, he didn't put it in that many words, but that's what I got from it, right? And so it turns out that the Washington Examiner picked up on it. They they got an article. Ex-government chief of UFO investigations, U.S. considering extraterrestrial hypothesis. In this article, according to them, I'm just, I'll be honest, because just fucking last week, Lou didn't want to talk about this shit. And now according to the Washington Examiner, well, shit, he's all he's out the closet. He's like he's he's got the freaking uh, uh, the shoes with the the fish the fish tank in it with the goldfish. He's got, he's all pimped out, like he literally he's, he's pimping the UFO theory. No matter what anybody wants to hear. Bugs in the background snoring. He just hit that that high. So they're saying that basically the former chief. And that's a really here's you know here's the thing. Lou Elizondo was the man that was uh, hijacking tapes during the A-tip situation. He was there. He was talking to the folks that were part of this group. He was talking about what they thought it was, what they were thinking it might be, what their inkling was. He might have been in these meetings where they were like, you know, had a a big freaking um, whiteboard up and they were like, drawing fucking charts and shit had pictures of people and drawing lines but Lou in this article is saying hey my name is Lou Elizondo and I've been UFO free for like 10 years no (laughs) he's saying hey the government while I was part of ATIP did have a running hypothesis that maybe these are ETs there may be unidentified aerial phenomena were not exactly of an earthly origin. He's saying this. Now again, this is, a, this is an article. We don't know how true this is or whether or not this actually came out of Lou Elizondo's mouth. But if you think about it, it makes perfect sense that the guy that was part of ATIP, the guy that had access to all the videos from all these incidents, from Navy pilots, um, flotillas, and things like that. That he found it so compelling that he needed to alleviate the Department of Defense from these videos. That maybe there were other conversations that convinced him, convinced Lou, that for fuck's sake, the world needs to know about what's happening behind these closed doors. This is what this article... This article is implying that. This article is saying that. What 
why can't we accept it? Why can't we just say that Lou is the man in front of this? Lou Elizondo is the face of ufology right now, this very moment. It's not the reptilian man with CE5. It's not Stephen Bassett trying to, you know, bully people in Congress. It's, there's no one else in ufology right now that has all of the topic on his shoulder other than Lou Elizondo. And he, he's not afraid. He's out there talking about it. He's telling people, stop fucking around. This is, this is, this is not fake news. And if you really think that all these years the Russians and the Chinese were the one that were doing this, then you're crazy. You literally have no clue about the history of these two countries. In this article, they talk about Moscow. And according to this, during the Soviet era, and possibly today, that the Russians operated a covert UFO research program. And apparently it was designed in a lot of ways to uh, replicate UFO technology. Former Soviet Navy officers publicly confirmed that they were engaged in the research of underwater UFO-related phenomena or USOs, for those of you who like the, you know, the vernacular of back in the day. But again, let's be honest about it. If the Russians are trying to investigate UFOs slash USOs, then how the fuck can they be the ones originating the um, incursions over our sovereign skies? Sounds like a problem. The article also talks about the South China Morning Post. I think I, I, I have a lot of caution in mind whenever I hear South China Morning Post. Either you must be so fucking far south that you're not even in the country to be able to publish any of this stuff. I'm gonna be honest. I think the South China Morning Post has been take has to be taken with a, a grain of salt. To be honest, because there's just no way. There is no way. The Chinese government is allowing them to uh, publish whatever the fuck they want. But here's a, according to our folks over at the uh, Washington Examiner, the South China Morning Post recently reported that the Chinese People's Liberation Army was also researching UFOs. And that they uh, varied in research may include efforts of the... uh, the uh, Chinese government to replicate UFO technologies. What the hell? So again, the statement is that they were replicating UFO technologies. Not that they originated this. They were replicating it. Uh, Elizondo in this apparently said that uh, he wasn't briefed on any such replication efforts to any success uh, on the part of uh, the United States. Listen, let's let's be honest. The more we dig into this, the more we see that, number one, Lou Elizondo is the uh, ufology superman at the moment, and we really need to put our, our efforts behind him. We need to champion Lou Elizondo. Send him a fucking email. Go to his website. Say, hey, Lou, you the man. What do you need? And I still, to this day, if you really think about it, for the guy to be running ATIP, to have all this information, Lou Elizondo knows more than what he's sharing. But he's not going to tell you what it is, because he is a bit of a man of honor, I believe. He's not going to share it with you until he knows that the American public, the public around the world, has his back. He's not going to tell you what it is that he has as he sits there through interview after interview like the cat that has a canary in his mouth. He's not going to let it out until he knows that he's going to be protected, that he's going to have the support 
Okay, we need to get behind him. Because he's not going to tell you the truth of what he knows until he feels he's safe. I'm just saying, I think he knows more. You guys can disagree with that, but um, you can't be in the midst of ATIP after so many years and not know more than just a couple of fucking videos. Let's be honest. That's the end of the uh, news reports for today. I'm going to play another track, and then we're going to get a phone call from the Asgardians after this uh, next track. And we'll see. We'll see what's on their mind. So this is like the extended version of the Wednesday episode. But uh, bear with me, because I feel like a fish on land. But uh, my drink today is it's awesome. So here it is. We're going to open the line up to the Cast Guardians. And they're going to call in and uh, hopefully have something to say about this madness. UAP report, representatives out the yin yang talking nonsense. Uh, whatever it takes, whatever it's on your mind, come in and talk. The number is 972 If you're on Skype, 
You can look up the name Boss Crawler, one word. Uh, yeah, for some reason I'm still using the, U, the UFO Buster Radio numbers, but yeah. hey, it is what it is. It is what it is, right? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it looks like the norm out of Nevada will be calling in first. One of the original as guardians. So we'll see what happens. We uh, we got to see. We'll give him a countdown. Five, four, three. I knew this wasn't going to work. Two. Uh, one. All right, I guess Norm isn't ready yet. So, um, hey, by the way, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, freaking Pinterest, believe it or not. I got people pinning my stuff, to be honest. Uh, join us on Pinterest, uh, Pinterest if you want to, because it is mad cool. Uh, for some reason, the Nam is saying he's getting a, a busy signal. Um... No yours. the line is open and ready. Come in the green. 972-290-1329. Uh, I might have to play another song just to get the norm on here, to be honest. You know, those guys in Nevada, the heat gets crazy out there. Or maybe I can just call him. Norm, place your number in there and uh, I'll give you a call. Let's see if we can uh, do something in the meantime so that we can get uh, norm on here. But um, what a crazy story. The fact that all these folks are coming out of the woodwork. Everybody has a goddamn opinion now. For fuck's sake. Let's get past the opinions and let's get it done. Let's find out the truth. And the thing is, they, they just need to go ahead and tell us that it's not freaking Russia or China. What do you think, Norm? It shouldn't be Russia or China anymore. We're done with that. I mean, Norm might have something to say. He's on there now. Who's on what? You're on the line. Welcome. Norm? Hello? Hello. This is Drake. Oh, well, shit balls. How did you get on here? I just called in. <laughs> okay, well, great. Uh, so, Dre, what's on your mind? What the- I was just reading my space stuff and MySpace. Uh, Nobody has MySpace anymore. What the hell are you talking about? No, not MySpace. Space. Just, just Oh gotcha, space. gotcha. Yeah, go ahead. Um and do you know how many people have died in space? Enough to it be uh, kind of scary for us. <laughs> Only three people have died in space. Three That's Russian it. astronauts. The Soyev eleven. They died during the re entry. Do you know that uh, I don't know, just googling space stuff, and there's there are more trees on the Earth than there are uh, stars in our universe. What the fuck? Who said that? It's in there. We have like almost like a trillion, eleven trillion uh, trees on Earth, and I think there's like sixty four billion stars in the universe. I'm like that oh. can't be true. Yeah, there's something wrong with that number. I, we got to check what year they did that. Um, what was the other one? Well, a lot of like, like, how many Earths can you fit in the sun? Like a million. I was like, come on. That sounds like a porn. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, what did you come on here with? Space porn? I don't understand. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't know what Norm was going to say, but I've just been reading some crazy space stuff, and I was like, wow. I was like, just, there's no way. So listen, Dre, you're a hot skip from SpaceX. When are you going to go down there? When are you going to go enjoy one of the launches and crashes? When they don't have rapid disassembly. <laughs> but that's when you should be there, man, to see it in person and feel the heat. You won't feel it when we're drinking tequila shots. <laughs> well, no, that's true. You might just burn up from the alcohol. But, yeah, <laughs> listen, let's be honest. This This is a perfect time for you guys. Actually... You and Davina can go down to South Beach and see it from the safety of the water. Yeah, get a condo and just sit up on the roof. What'd you say about condoms? <laughs> sit on a condo. 
Exactly. Get a condo. Actually, uh, NASA space flight. They're the YouTube that goes down there every time. They actually shoot some of the video from one of the hotels uh, out oh, in yeah. South Beach. Yeah, something to look at. Yeah. I mean, they're not stupid. They don't want to get blown up. <laughs> they see the birds dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man, I think I think that is going to be cool. Well, sadly enough, though, the next one that goes up is going to end up in the Pacific. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens. All right, that was that was my little quiz. Check check those crazy facts out. That's it. That's all you got. Space porn. Yeah. Space porn. <laughs> I don't, Norm should be calling in. Yeah, I think he's. He probably he had space porn too, but now he's looking up something else. <laughs> he's looking like a planetary soft porn. <laughs> oh, that that's it for me today. All right, Dre. Thank you for calling in from South Texas, the one and only Dre. Ciao. Have a, have a good one. Adios. All right, that was Dre with the space porn. That was kind of strange. I didn't know where he was going with this. You know, putting a million Earths into the sun. Oh, gosh. I felt like I... At that point, I felt like maybe we needed a disconnect because shit was going the wrong way. Really crazy. Uh, no. And Norm is saying that uh, he maybe he's got the wrong number. Let me just call him because for fuck's sake, we can call people on uh, the Tempest Universe because we, we give zero fucks anymore. We'll call anybody. As a matter of fact... I want to do like Ramden, Ramden, uh, Ramden. Does it see all the porn stuff is it's getting crazy? Uh, random calls to people in ufology. Why not? Why can't we call them and just quiz them just like this guy from TMZ did? Just, just out of nowhere. Oh, guess what? Blah, 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 blah. And see what the hell they say. I'm sure most of them would fucking hang up, to be honest. Let's call it the norm. See what's up with him. Oh, shit. It's ringing. My man. Hello, can my I man, speak to man, Norman, man, please? Man, man. Is Norman on yeah. the line? Will you please hold? Please, thank you. Please hold. Gracias. Orderly, come here. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. come here. Come here. Your turn. Hey! Hey! How's it going? Hola, <laughs> Norman. <laughs> hey, we got a hold of each other, finally. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Why couldn't you dial in? What the fuck? I, I, I have the wrong number in Texas. I, I was calling a text number. It might have been the Cowboys. Oh, shit. Why not? Yeah. Somebody's got to call them. <laughs> shit. I, I swear. Yeah, hey, no kidding. Uh, I, I have to say, great show. This has been one of my funnest. Uh, you're you're so close with so much. And I'm just, uh, 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 I'm so with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, you got the right path. There's one thing, and, and when you want to talk about Lou Elizondo, I love this man, and a lot of men. And from wait, wait, where, you love you know, a lot of men? What are you talking about? Uh, is this another space know, a lot of men. porn thing? Yeah. Lou Elizondo, this is all about this is all about togetherness. This okay, like to okay, got, got you, got you, got you. You got me, you got me. C five all the way, right? Yes. Um, wait, no, uh, so, no, not C five. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Uh, so I, I understand the Greer has started this whole flow he went in a different direction and he did this is, he did he, in my opinion this is his option this is his chance to really redeem with getting with Lou and Lou needs whoa so much this is taking a wrong turn here they, they want to get with each other no, no, no. <laughs> we're not going back <laughs> to Dre here, right? Wait, no, I'm hold on a second. With, I'm, done with, I'm done with the whole 17 thing, but yeah. we're talking on the Can real Can I tell you ride. something? Can I tell you something? Yes. Just course, real quick. This, this is totally going to cost my ass guardian career, but go ahead. No, no, but uh, today <laughs> I was thinking about, like, if, if we wanted to capture a reptilian, we just need fucking crickets. Oh, oh, yeah, as bait? Oh, hell yeah. Yes, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. If we dropped a bunch of crickets in front of uh, our main <laughs> rubber dicker, uh, Stephen uh-huh. Greer, and he all of a sudden so, he gets on all fours and he's licking shit up, he's he's a freaking point. reptilian. Great point. Great yeah. point. And where are all where are all the cicadas right now? In Greer's backyard. 
<laughs> they're actually more on the East Coast where you guys are. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I haven't had any. So, I've had, like, light yeah. bugs. A lot of light bugs. Cicadas, cicadas, mm-hmm. you know, if you're talking, like, if you want to attract the reptilians, yeah. cicadas would be a perfect, you know, uh, you know, it's like it's like what we do with salmon. We eat salmon in, in mm-hmm. restaurants, and mm-hmm. we like to enjoy a, a whole Chinese and Japanese uh, uh, dining experience. So we go in and we order this raw salmon. So why can't they? You know, if a reptilian, and in and, and my, in and what I understand, if I'm not mistaken, reptilians are supposed to be the kinder species. It's really strange because they talk about the greys as being an AI who just invades you and takes you. But it's, it's so, okay. Let, let me just say that it depends who you read. Some people say reptilians are mad as fuck all the time. Uh, right, and that that's usually Hollywood. Yeah, but listen, if you have to lick your eyeballs all the time, wouldn't you be mad? If, in, well, no, because I have to pluck them anyway. Uh, wow. <laughs> I might as well take them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, species. I mean, we're talking the difference of of a species, and and if you get if you get real deep into it, right, then you're going to look at the three obvious suspects: right. the humans, the reptilians, and the greys. And the greys happen to be, in my belief, here before everybody. And you know, it doesn't mean they're all there. Just because you have an alien race out there doesn't mean they're all there. You know what I mean? Look yeah, but let, We're human. let's uh, let's go to the core of this. So you're saying yeah, that the, okay. the greys have been here forever. It explains why they right. have no balls and no hair. But still, do you think well, that the that the greys are thinking, little robots or real beings? No. Well, okay. In my opinion, uh, the greys the greys are either one of two things. They're either Artificial, artificially made by a, a different kind of a gray, like a more robust style that can handle the atmosphere of, right. of Earth. With uh, Versus what? Yeah, exactly. So, so you got this alien race. They can't come down here because uh, whatever. We have a UV whatever, you know, and, and they'll burn up or you know, vampire style, right? right? Look at vampires. Uh, put vampires in here. Why not? They're alien to me. They are. Werewolves are alien to me. Uh, Bigfoot, alien. They're all alien to me. So you, we're talking about just, not not just here on Earth, but something outside mm-hmm. of it. So coming in, they can't get in here, so they have to develop this style of, a, of an artificial intelligent, intelligence so that they can investigate us. Now, they've, the truth be told, and you hit it every day when you talk, they have done this for thousands of years. Why are they doing it still? I don't think they are. I think they've done it, and, and I think other civilizations, even from our own species, are experimenting on their own species. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be. We do it all the time, right? In yeah. other, in yeah, other we aspects, we experiment on people. Yep. yep. So what we have here now is a little investigation into the... Uh, UFO experience that we've all experienced through the COVID vex, uh, through the COVID uh, <laughs> dilemma <laughs> that we had for the last two years, and people are waking up and everything's changing now. So COVID is is getting healed, in my opinion, <clears throat> and uh, we're we're losing track on on where we were going with that. So it might have been an open topic. And maybe this topic, as it always does, closes. And it closes hard on ufologists. I mean, it closes hard. And um, the the people that, that stick together are the ones that survive it. And they keep going with the truth. So what I'm trying to t- say with the greer uh, Lozondo connection is these guys are one and the same. I mean, I don't see, I don't understand. That, that, that is beyond what the the NSA is going to give us, um, which Lou started, and but well, Lou progressed. I'll say, uh, Lou had this thing in at this time, but Greer's been doing this for years, almost twenty now, 
and and he he brought forth a lot of army, a lot of navy, a lot of you know really trusted people, and those mm-hmm. stories have gone on, and we've lived on those stories for the last ten years. Truly. So, so I'm saying these two need to come together for our sake, because it, I mean if Stephen has to pull his head out of his ass out of a CE five ass, I don't care. Uh, if, 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 if Lou has to stop doing uh, Joe Rogan podcast because the guy is drinking and smoking so much fucking crack, <laughs> how can you go with that, right? We're trying to be serious here. And, and the man is wearing a wig and, and, and doing Wait, podcasts. Who's wearing a wig? And, and, who's wearing a wig? Uh, that would be Joe, 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 Joe Rogan. Joe yeah. Rogan wears a yeah. wig. I thought he was just bald. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, no, no, no. He wears a wig and... You know, by the grace of God, he, Lou was able to get on a show with some real proper people. We talked about this thing very seriously, and we need to stay serious. Uh, that's my point. So the the fact that that COVID is is healing and people are moving on, we don't we don't really have to you know grab straws here. We just need to keep going. And those two parties are the strongest of both sides. So they both have to come together for the sake of the real truth. Because even if the government doesn't give it to us, there's something here. And, and we don't, like you say all the time, we don't need their permission to believe in this. That is a we million percent will. correct. We, we don't. But we here's a question will. for you. So let's say, sure. and this is a situation, situation or question. Think about this. It's almost like you're taking an SAT. So if you are sitting down in an empty room and Louis Elizondo walks in and uh, so does Stephen Greer and Stephen Greer says says Norm I need you got a C5 event I need to contact the aliens and then on the other side is Lou and you know Lou is like always like on red alert you know he says come on fucker I need you he's edge. Yeah. For sure. yeah he's on the edge he's like hey fucker I need you to back me up. I need you to yep. walk hard. I can't on my see. Side. I can't see. You know what? Here's what I, I love the question. Great question. Yeah. Here's my answer to this. It's not my answer. What? It's those two guys. No, those you have two, to answer the question, two. Norm. Stop copying now. Who are you going to go with? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Who am I going to go with? No, I'm going to yeah. put them together and we're all three going. See, Whoa, that's, that's again, we're taking another porn thing we're, here. I don't understand. We you are, go, three we are, are going? We are. <laughs> Menage and Trois, I love the French. They have a UFO <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, uh, we are, I, I'm serious. I'm all about that. And, and it's not that it's, it's like it goes against the strength that we need to back this up because there are, in my opinion, uh, forces of aliens beyond our control. And they can do whatever they want and they can fly wherever they want. However, the only, the only, the only weird thing is, they haven't attacked us. But, so, that's, but listen, what, that's, do you, what do you want? But that's I mean, the core. On. That's the core of my question. On one side, you got to do this slick, and actually, it looks like one of his arms. He only works on one, and the other one's kind of skinny, and that is uh, Stephen right. Greer. And <laughs> and he says, once one's used for writing, and <laughs> one's used for beating. Yeah. I guess because <laughs> he writes a lot. Go ahead. <laughs> and he and he says to you. You know, uh, aliens love you. They're going to heal you. Norm, whatever is wrong with you, they're going to heal you. They're here, peace, love, right. and happiness. Let's right. get on the soul right. train. And yeah, on the other side, Louis the says, these motherfuckers might be fucked up, but I need you to be on here, and I want you to be strong about it because you're going to be yep. attacked by all kinds of sides. But you know yep. what? And that's, and that's only half of that truth, too. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you I'm fucking sorry. with me now? This is where what? no, I'm not. <laughs> I told you what? this is where I kick that ass guardian. <laughs> yeah. What I, is okay? The two of no, them are both wait. right. They are no. both right. They can't be They're norm. Both right. Stop fucking yeah. around with me. What's the, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. This is this is the kind of shit you don't hear on any other podcast. Norm. I know, right. What yeah. is your as uh, Socrates would say, you're via mediocrity. What is your middle road on aliens? Time. What? Time. Time what? 
time only is the is the only evidence I can use to prove any of it because it's not here now and if it's not here now then I need time okay so you're saying that you're undecided as, as, well, yeah. Well, no, I use both sides, but like, like because I'm a cheetah, I have to, you know, <laughs> survive. So I have to choose both sides. I you have said to find you were a cheetah, and I have to eat a cheetah. Well, okay. I use that as a, just an example. Gotcha. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> example of that. <laughs> um, I'm on both sides. Yes, I, I, I am a lifer on the fence. I am, and I do that because I want to see every piece of evidence. I love how Greer comes out and mm -hmm. he does his thing and he gets me attra attracted and then he you know, finds a, a money angle and he needs money and he goes there. So it's my responsibility on myself to see him doing that and say, okay, well, but he's I'll a wait. He, he's, a, he's a ufology now, now, whore. He's a reptilian oh, of ufology whore. Well, he didn't ask for this job either. Remember, at the beginning, yep. he never well, asked for them. Well, yeah, he cries about that, but literally, he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he could literally still be <laughs> an emergency room doctor and not be uh, fucking with us trying to get funding for his documentaries. Uh, speaking of which, yeah. I want to share with you the sure. name of my doctor who just checked me out. 100%. Check you out for what? What are you talking about? Yeah, he checked me out for everything. Out here, we got to get Did he like, do the physical... DRE? Did he do the DRE? Oh, man, it was... It, he did not get nowhere near 17 with me, but okay. his name is Jaeger, and he gave me a clear bill of health. Jaeger? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I what had to actually take, I took a picture of his card. I'll put it on the website. I swear to God. The man is, is beyond awesome. And I asked him, have you ever removed? Just out of the blue, because he, he, you know, I know I'm healthy, and he don't know why. But <laughs> that's the cool part. So I mess with him, and I say, "Doc," I say, "Hey, doc," and I call him. I call all my doctors. Hey, doc. Hey, mm -hmm. doc. Have you ever removed an alien implant? And he he actually looked at me, and he said, "This, I don't know. Maybe what? I swear to God." And, and that told me something about how far since Fox Mulder. And Dana Scully, have we come? Uh, because it, remember back then, those were so rare. But right, right. these doctors are pulling things out of people. That and th this is all truly noted. It has to be right. It has to be in doctors' uh, inquiries when they write. When they write at the end of a of a surgery, they have to write down everything. Right. That's that's why we give them college money. <laughs> so they're writing all these things down. And I swear to God. I'm like looking at this guy going, you don't know? And he, I swear, and then he leaves the room, right? Nurse's time. <laughs> he comes back in because he forgot to check something on me. He comes back in and checks on it. And I looked at him and I go, so, you want to try it? And he says, I'll get back with you. And he leaves. And I, I haven't heard from him since. But he, I swear to God, he, we're talking about doctors. We're talking about everybody who is along the lines of ufology are actually understanding what's happening we're not freaks we're not you know crips we're not crippled mm -hmm. we're not mm -hmm. like brain dead we're not stoned we're not fucking drunks we're we're real people having these episodes and it's been happening for at least 70 years and it can't you can't beat that so that's why my point is time look at time time is everything in here it, it owns all of us and it owns the truth and that's where I look. I look inside time for the truth. And the truth still says that no matter what the government says about the report, we all know the truth already because of time, because of history. The only thing we're asking is for them to cop to it. You've been doing it for weeks now. You don't have to anymore. They've heard your message. It's, it's no longer up to us to worry about what they say. Can I just say this? <laughs> If you go to your doctor and he's performing a DRE and he comes out with an alien probe, please, please take the evidence and run. Oh, <laughs> I think I think if I can't get out of this little doctor's office with my uh, sample, uh, yeah. I'm worthless <laughs> because I've been able to get away with my x-rays, right? right? I have my x-rays, so I still own those. Those are my property. You know, unlike you know, I, I love the I love 
Oh my god, we haven't even gotten into Ronnie, right? <laughs> no, we haven't got Ronnie's coming on yeah. here probably next week. And geez oh my Louise, god, I cannot wait! I cannot he, wait. He I had heard, a hell of a time in Laughlin. I can sit there and imagine him yes. going through his the beginning, the end, the middle, and then when he hit that end, at the very end, he threw in what hit what worries him the most is the uh, kitty cat <laughs> seventeen for life mm-hmm. story and. You know, it, I, I actually I shared this with my neighbor today before your show. Okay. And uh, what's your neighbor's he is, first name? It, it, well, his name is Stan, and Stan the he man, is a Friedman. Retired. Yeah, that's, that's what I call him. He's a retired Navy guy. Oh, I, I looked at him. I told him the story, and his eyes boggled. And and I I looked at him and I said, okay. Yeah, but that that might be because he likes cat ladies. <laughs> well, the man doesn't own a cat, so <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. we're talking about full cat been... ladies, not just kitty cats. <laughs> yeah. So his reply to me was this: very simple. I've heard of a lot of alien stories, and that one is new to me. And he didn't, he didn't like you know turn and run, but right. he wanted to make sure I knew that I knew he knew what alien stories were about. Okay. And that was interesting to me. Because like he that. wasn't willing to just say, you're a freak and I'm gone, right? Right, right. Ron, Ron's, story, Ron's story is his story. And we've all admitted it on air that we know he believes it. And, oh, and absolutely. It, absolutely. And, and the way he shares not just that one, the other ones before it, so much has happened to Ron. I mean, it goes be, way beyond 17, but 17 is always the liquor, so to speak. It's the one that really gets people going, that ended well. <laughs> Different, right. but well, in the it end. Did. Now, it did. Uh, I swear to God, I mean, I, I regret not being able to be there. I was so close. I, I was so close to getting out there, because I'm so close to him, you know, and where Laughlin is. And the, I remember when I first ever went to that, certain uh, 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 <laughs> little shindig they had and this is 19 years ago <laughs> mm-hmm. it was um, a, an amazing experience when you go to when you go to ufology uh, conventions they they bring out the best in you if you kind of wear blinders and you go with what you believe you can see where it leads into other avenues and I'm sure, I'm sure Ron has had that experience finally in his life. Can you imagine? Ron's never done this before. And he gets called out of the blue after a pandemic because of y- your due diligence, I must say, and the fact that he was willing to go the distance. He shows up for his first one ever, right? Right. Am I wrong or am I right? No, you're, I'm you're, right. you're right. this is the first time right. old Ronnie Dawson was on stage without the 17, yeah. but he was there. Yeah, but he, I wasn't there, but I can imagine what he did. And it sounded probably very similar to a uh, three week episode, four week episode you had ago with him mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. he was sharing his story. Yeah, two weeks ago. It was definitely two weeks ago. I remember I was there. I listened to the whole thing. And, uh, the man, the man's story is his own, and he doesn't complain about a thing. That makes me so happy to be a part of this ufology still, no matter what. If I don't see anything out in the skies, uh, like I usually do, because I do, uh, but they're not, you know, provable, you know, this is alien technology, it goes into a whole other, you know, storyline. Right. goes into, you know, government controlling satellites, controlling the new technology that's already in the lower atmosphere that we, we don't even talk about. Uh, but they're there. I see them every fucking night. Um, anyway, the, Ron has, is sharing his truth. The, the effects of, you know, thousands upon thousands of years of these beings being here before us. He's like one of the first to share those experiences, mm-hmm. as uh, many many have. I've never experienced that. I've never had. I, I I do not. Even though I have a little metal whatever thing in my bicep, I don't have any memory of an abduction or you know something out of the ordinary other than just dreams. But they're not you know conceived 
you know, I, I won't even say they're real because I woke up. I woke up in the morning. I realized it was a dream. I was like, okay, that was a dream. It was cool. I don't understand it because I'm only seven, but, you know, anyway. <laughs> uh, so when, when, when a man of his tenure, his existence, he's lived a lot longer than us. He's been around, what? Like 500 you know, years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got experiences we haven't had, or we had, and we just haven't been able to re resolve. And uh, he resolved them himself in his own heart. That's what draws me to Ron. Uh, the, the man is like okay with it, you know? Uh, that makes me beyond, right? I mean, we, we, we talk about it all the time. We, people are freaking out when these things happen right, to them. Right. But the man, the man found a system in his own self to grow up from it and, and be a part of it instead of running away from it. And I, I give the man kudos for that. that yeah. And you too. That's why I called you tonight. I want to, to give you a little ups. You yeah. went through a lot this year, dude. You, you know, oh, yeah, and, it, was, and, it was nuts. It was nuts. Uh, um, you know, but, but, but here's going. the thing. You're going. Hey. You're reading the stories. You're seeing the truth. And yeah. you keep moving forward. And, and let's and go back to let's go back to Ronnie for a second because you know one of the things that impacted me the most this year was the passing of my brother Big O. It was uh, the initial first year of uh, UFO Boston big, Radio. Big he was there. You know, in that first year, we met Ronnie Dawson, and the wow. first thing that Big O said to me is, "I love that guy." And I was yeah. like, and I was floored. I was fucking floored with Ronnie's story. Now, mind yeah. you, at this time, at this time, we had no idea about seventeen. So, but his story, nice. the original story, as it stood, without what happened afterwards, because it actually our first interview happened before the whole seventeen situation. Um, we <laughs> we we were totally floored. We loved Ronnie. I I guarantee you. I guarantee you. When Ronnie's nineteen or seventeen came out in Laughlin. I wasn't there. I'm sure it did the same thing it, to them it did to me. Shocked and awed, and, but they couldn't say anything because of that, what you're talking about right now. And, and what I'm saying is, the, the man had an experience that who could talk about that? So, it, he took a shot. And, and you know what? With me, when I heard that story, I was like, oh God. And I, <laughs> I'm doing dishes. I'm washing dishes, listening to Ronnie's first 17 story. And I'm like, uh, this can't be, this can't be, this can't be. But there's, uh, my, my, my rational brain, my, my mathematical brain says, oh, yeah, it can be. It can be. It can right. be. Right. It can be. And, it can. and I'm like going, golly, you know. And I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost like... A, it's almost like a Republican coming into a drum circle for the first time. They don't realize how good it is until they're in it. <laughs> yeah. Until or, someone yeah, slips the, the, uh, or the, the KY and gets them. Or the, ah, yeah, or the same thing with a Democrat coming into a Republican uh, shooting, uh, you know, shooting up target practice or hunting, hunting, hunting. A oh, perfect example. I, I, you know, it's the same thing. It's a shock. But if you can get your way through the bullshit of your judgmentalism, then you can see the man's story, and you can see how it feels. And, and how it feels to him is how it you know, seemed to feel to me. And I was like, okay, I've never been through an abduction, but I realize what they are because I've read communion. You know, I know Travis Walton. I know those men have been through things, and I actually, I actually you know, find them credible. So Ronnie's story isn't incredible; it's just incredible. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And to to really get to the core of that, it is the individual delivering the story, and the fact that they're consistent throughout the years delivering it that makes yeah. it credible. Yep, yep, yep. And you can take our guy out here in Nevada as, as proof of that. Who's you that? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go for us. <laughs> what the hell? That's like half of it's fucking Nevada. What are you talking about? I, well, okay, Area 51 for us. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The man with the jet rockets who, you know, I wish I could drive. <laughs> oh, God, that is freaking hilarious. 
you know, I can't memorize everybody's name. I'm not. But, I'm not. But and and I'll is, tell you why. I'm yeah. blue collar. I'm blue collar. Exactly. I'm a blue collar guy. I, I'm not here to make money on them. I'm not here to make money off them. I'm not. I'm not here to give them money. <laughs> so, fuck off. <laughs> but the truth is, I'm here to learn from them because I focus on time. And and whether it be Bob Lazar or whether it be you know uh, SpaceX greatest, uh, the, they all have a time and a history. And I'm fortunate to be here to to witness it all. You know, I can't I can't sit there and save the planet. Uh, that's you know, not. I don't think that's up to aliens either. I think that's more of a, our job. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm telling you this from a, a about a 99 degree temperature out here in the backyard of Nevada, <laughs> which is unusual but livable still. But it might change. So anyway, I think uh, I think when you take like gotta, Bob, you take Bob Lazar and all these yeah. other guys and you put them together. Like if they're, you had a condition, so longevity. their longevity, their longevity, yeah. right? Yeah, but but think about this: if you had the same, let's let's, let's put it's this at, at a medical condition. So you went to so mm. you went to see Doctor Jaeger, and Jaeger, mm-hmm. and you've been seeing him for like fucking sixty years, and Jaeger That'd finally says, "Dude, you've been complaining about the same fucking thing. Don't you think it's a real thing by now? That's that's what yeah. we're dealing with with ufology." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure this doc would tell me that. I swear to God. I mean, straight up. Uh, and we we do it all the time. You do it. You, you've done it more than anybody I've ever listened to. You are telling them the truth. You are, Manny Moonraker, by the way. Uh, you are telling that truth. And you have uh, my utmost respect for that. Because a lot of guys are trying to go, okay, where do I go from here? COVID happened. And, you know, okay, well, well I, I don't care about all that. I got my shot. I believe I'm immune. I'm still alive. All my family's alive. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. And, and all through that, here, this UAP or two or three show up. And I get, to, I get to go through this with that, and I get to analyze it. I get to make my own opinion. And, and here's what my opinion is. We're this ready. Is, Hold on a second. This is human. We need like this a sound effect for this. Yeah, here we go. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> All right, go. Okay. We what we're seeing is human, but it's older than the generation searching it. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It it's been here before us. All right. And it's us. I mean part 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 us. Well, in my belief, of course, you know, we're crossbred with uh, alien artifact from billions of years ago. Uh, and, you know, we're, we are Martians, but we're here now, and we will be somewhere else if we fuck this one up, too. That's my opinion. Wait, hold on a second. This is like a revelation. Oh. So I'm you sorry. think that maybe <laughs> we are... So the Martians fucked up the damn planet, and so they say, oh, let's go to the third rock from the sun... We uh, yep. hump a couple of monkeys and we're there. <laughs> well, <laughs> it took a little more than that, but you're on the right point. <laughs> that's that's it right there in a nutshell. I mean, come on. I, 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 you know, I, I've read the Bible. I, I've, I've been a very, very scholarly person, actually, in in Judaism and in, in, in Christianity. Uh, the Apocrypha is you know, something that I've delved into. So I'm, I'm open, you know, I'm an open person. So these thoughts don't really, uh, the, the ones that scare other people, they don't really, you know, they might've scared me, but they kept coming. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I couldn't do Yeah. I couldn't stop them really, to be honest. I mean, everything that, that, that falls upon a, a person who's interested in UFOs, they, it, you can't escape it. It's, it's somewhere in your media. It's somewhere in your life. It's somewhere in your history. And it's just there. It, there's no way around it. So it, may, it, makes, it makes a person look at it. And when I looked at it hard enough, I said, you know what? There's, there's, there's more to history than just, you know, other beings. There's us. You know, and I think we go way back. Um, and, you know, it, I, don't, I don't see why it's not possible that, that we can fix this, but we don't have to. But this is this is all the ancient anyway. stuff. 
basically. Yeah. yeah well, they've no, been no, here no, forever. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it goes in well. No, see, not only that, but it goes beyond them. I mean, we're talking ancient aliens. That's great. That's back then, and you should have learned that back then. But we're talking about now, and and so many people uh, have have gone further than us uh, in this in this earth. You know, beyond what we can feel, whether it be through pain or through joy, and and. They've they've gone beyond. You know they've died. They've they've left us. You know we're we're the livers. We're the ones who have to sit here and rustle through all the leaves and figure out which ones worth keeping, um, which ones you know which ones recyclable and which ones you know, worth keeping. So I don't know. Um, it, from this point, it, whatever they say, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm sure actually they'll give us both. They'll give us both good news and they'll give us both bad news, right? I, d- they, I mean, they yeah. will. But That's today, listen, 2021, if I said to you, Norm, Lou Elizondo is crossing the ufology ocean, and I need you to jump on his hairy ass back and grab on it like he's a stallion to help him oh, cross yeah. the line, oh, yeah. would you do it? Oh, yeah, and everybody before me should. Stephen Greer, uh, Joe Rogan, everybody who ever used this man should be still here. Without a doubt, and beyond. I mean, this man has taken up a torch, and why not carry it? We didn't have a really great 2020 Olympics, so fuck it, right? <laughs> why not? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the man <laughs> is right. He's fucking balls out. And you know what? He, he to me, this man is the next Bob Lazar. You know, he has to. He has to keep going. The man brought us something, and and whether or not it was legal or not, I'm I'm beyond that. Because right. oh, fuck you, fuck you. If you're gonna give me laws and you're gonna break them all, and then fucking say I still have to live by laws, fuck you. If this man who has the guts to do this brings us this information, we gotta back this up. We gotta back it up, and that's my call to everyone: back him up, set him. Like a encouragement email or something like that. How can I help you get this message across? Because he's yeah. slowly coming out of uh, his uh, Hit comfort him up zone. On Twitter. Yeah. Get him on this goddamn show. Yeah. I, I'm talking to all my Asgardians. I'm talking to everybody who wants to be an Asgardian. You want this guy on the show? You go out and get him. We all can do this. You know, we got to tell him he is not crazy. He's not. Uh, alone, he's not under attack by the people who he is doing this for. He's only under attack by the people who want him to shut up. Right. And the people who don't want him to shut up have to stand up. My point. That's all I'm saying. Hey, listen. Can and you Stephen say? Greer, can you give a? Can you give Stephen a shout Greer, out to the guys in Adelaide, Australia? Oh, for sure. You guys, you know, keep coming back always. Adelaide, you guys are rocking it. Keep coming back. Day for life. Wait, what did you say? Gay for life. Dave. Oh, Dave. Dave for No, Dave's <laughs> not in Adelaide. Actually. <laughs> well, he's my closest connection, not you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. Hey, thank yeah. you very much. I, I, and I, like I said, you guys, if Manny's got some time, call in. Upset him. Make him work. He, he, he can do it. This man is ready to go. Call in, gripe, and and beg, and and put forth everything you have. This is, you know, we have a new life now. COVID is on its way out, and this is now. You know, we have evidence, and whether or not they share it with us, it doesn't matter. We just stick with the people who gave it to us. That's all I'm saying. I'm out. I love you guys, and uh, that's it. That's all I got, bud. Ciao, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> That's for like. calling in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. Norm said it. I mean, who cares about uh, if they gave it to you with or without the grease, KY or not. But on this podcast, as you know, uh, there's something that I got to say, which is a million percent truth. This is why I'm not aligned with any big podcast or media outlet or any of the big names in ufology. Is because of this. Yeah.
Fucking scream at me? Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you! Look at you with your fucking 48% body fat and. <laughs>